In today's video, we're going to talk about asymptotic notation. So this is something we might have seen in different mathematical contexts, but don't have a concrete idea of what's actually mathematically going on. We're going to focus on big O of a function and then comment on big omega and big theta as well. And we're going to use the concrete definitions that usually come from computer science, meaning we're thinking of the value n as going to infinity. Now what this does is it compares the size of functions. So a function defined on the natural numbers, let's say g of n, is considered to be in big O of f of n if eventually f of n dominates g of n asymptotically. So how we can state this concretely is there is a constant greater than zero and a natural number n naught so that n being large enough, meaning n being greater than or equal to n naught, means that the absolute value of this g function is dominated by the function f. And the control on how much is dominated by is governed by this constant c. But it is a constant overall. Okay, so eventually f of n is dominating this function g of n. So I want to give a concrete example of how our intuition actually matches with this particular definition. So for instance, if you look at the two functions of n, 2 to the n and n factorial, in our minds, n factorial will dominate 2 to the n in size because n factorial multiplies n numbers, most of which are greater than 2, whereas 2 to the n multiplies n numbers that are exactly 2. Okay, so let's actually see this by looking at values of n and comparing 2 to the n and n factorial. Okay, so when n is 1, we get 2 and 1. And when n is 2, we get 4 and 2, and then 8 and 6, and then 16 and 24. Okay, we can kind of see that after this point, n factorial will actually be strictly larger than 2 to the n. And a way to see this is here we'll have 2 to the n and n factorial at some point. And the next term will be multiplying the right term by n plus 1 and the left term by 2. Right? And so this will be strictly larger inductively. Okay, so if we think about the actual definition, we could say that if we select n naught to be the point at which n factorial does dominate, which is right here, so n naught equal to 4, then for n greater than or equal to n naught, we have that 2 to the n is less than or equal to 1 times n factorial. So that 1 is our constant c, which establishes that 2 to the n is big O of n factorial. We could have changed the actual constant. For example, we could have selected instead n naught to be 3. Then we need a constant that accounts for the fact that 2 to the n, when n is 3, is bounded by a constant times n factorial. And we can change that constant to, say, the number 2. And that will work for all n greater than or equal to this n naught. So the point is that earlier terms really are negligible, but we can adjust the constants if we wanted to. But this does concretely give us a sense that asymptotically, n factorial does dominate 2 to the n. Another great example is looking at polynomial functions. So for example, we would suspect that something like 3n squared minus 2n plus 5 is big O of n cubed, because eventually cubes in n will dominate quadratics in n. But let's actually see this concretely from the definition of the big O notation. So we'll use g of n for this function right over here, and this will be f of n. Okay, so what we notice about the absolute value of g of n is it's the absolute value of 3n squared minus 2n plus 5. And we want to bound this by a constant times big O, uh, times n cubed itself. Now by the triangle inequality, this is less than or equal to 3 times the absolute value of n squared plus 2 times the absolute value of n plus 5 itself, which is 5 times 1. And we can bound every single one of these terms by n cubed 
which is going to be true when n is at least 1. So this is bounded above by 3n cubed plus 2n cubed plus 5n cubed, which is a really huge upper bound, but it still establishes exactly the thing we want, which gives us a 10n cubed. All right, so if we pick our c to be 10, we can pick our n naught to be 1, and we're happy. Let me see that n cubed dominates asymptotically this quadratic function. And we can see then that in general, if we had a polynomial P of n that had degree k, then this will be big O of n to the k plus 1 in general. Okay, what about this big omega of f of n? So big omega acts like an opposite of big O. So we say that g of n is in big omega of f of n if eventually g of n will be greater than or equal to a constant times f of n. Now, this is actually a definition that was adopted by computer scientist Knuth. And the idea was to have a definition that's workable in a computer science context. And I should mention there are competing definitions for this in different areas of mathematics. But again, I want to stick with the ones that are inherited from computer science. Typically in computer science, you do algorithmic analysis comparing the runtimes of algorithms and having this notation is very useful. So you can kind of see how this sort of relates. Now finally, big theta gives you a comparison of two functions that essentially are on the same order. So we'll say g of n is big theta of f of n if eventually g of n is sandwiched between two constants times f of n itself. Okay, and these constants c1 and c2 are positive. So essentially, you can think about this as saying that the ratio of g of n and f of n has a limit as n goes to infinity. It's not actually true. It's actually saying something about the lim inf and lim sup. But if that limit actually did exist, and you don't have a sense of what those lim inf and lim sup things are, which is fine, you don't need to know them, this gives us a sense that um, having the limit of the ratio um, means that those two functions are of the same order. Okay, so here is a class of functions. And a good question to ask in this light is, how do their orders compare? Which ones are big O of which other ones? We saw already that 2 to the n is big O of n factorial. But what about these other ones? Right? For example, how does root n compare to log n? And how does n squared compare to root n? And how does n factorial compare to root n? So a question I have for you to leave in the comments is, how would you order these in order of asymptotic behavior? Which ones are big O of which other ones? Leave your thoughts in the comments with arguments as to why. You might have a sense, for example, that n squared ought to be asymptotically less than n factorial, but can you give a concrete idea of how to establish this using our big O notation? Leave your thoughts in the comments and see you in the next video.